So in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about how to think about the difference between left-hand sums and right-hand sums. This is material that I went over towards the end of class on Monday, but it was a little rushed and I sensed there were still some questions, so I thought going over it again and then doing a quick example might be helpful, particularly for the homework. So the scenario again will be that we have some cat running at speed v, and we know how the speed changes as the time changes. In this case, the cat is slowing down instead of speeding up. And suppose we want to know how far the cat goes from time A to time B. And we'll imagine that we've decided, just arbitrarily, to break this interval up into three subintervals. And so what we do is we pretend that the velocity is constant during this interval between my two fingers. It's not, obviously but we're just going to pretend that it is. And let's do a left-hand sum first. And so the left-hand sum says we're going to pretend that the cat is going at the left value all the time. And so as we've seen, that's going to give us a rectangle like this. So the area of this red rectangle is the distance that the cat has moved from time A to time here, between my two fingers, this time interval, under the fiction that it's actually moving at this constant speed. Then what happens with, for this interval? Same thing, we build a rectangle, but we choose the left value. And in this interval, what do we do? A rectangle, and we choose the left value. So the sum of the area of these three rectangles is, uh, in this case, an overestimate for how far the cat actually goes. We can also do a right-hand sum. So, same sort of thing. We're going to pretend that the speed is constant between my two fingers, but now we're going to pretend it's constant at the right-hand value. So I build a rectangle using the right value. And I do the same thing here. And the same thing here. So, um, all of these blue rectangles, that's our underestimate for how far the cat goes, and all of these larger red rectangles are our overestimate for how far the cat goes. So we want to know what's the difference between these two. Um, right, the idea here is that we're bracketing the true values between an upper estimate and an overestimate, and we'd like to know what's the difference between those. That'll tell us how accurate um, our, our, our guess is. So the difference, say, between the red triangle, uh, red rectangle, which is larger than the blue, is just this little thing here. And I'll um, shade this in in this sort of purple maroonish thing. There's that. And there's that. So the difference between the left-hand sums and right-hand sums is this little purple area plus this little purple area plus that little purple area. So now I'm going to imagine stacking those areas on top of each other and sort of moving them to the right over here. Let me attempt to draw that. Uh, I messed up already. Let me attempt again to draw that. Yeah, that looks a little better. So the idea is, I take these three rectangles, slide them on top of each other, put them over there. So this funny shape here, these three rectangles, well, that is the difference between the left-hand sum and the right-hand sum. And we can just geometrically write down a formula for this. The base of this rectangle um, is just delta t. And delta t, that's our little uh, time interval over which we tell a lie, over which we're telling the lie that the speed is constant. Um, this height here for this rectangle is initial velocity minus final velocity. So uh, I'll write that here. And so in general, the formula is. Um, delta t times vf minus vi. 
and I put absolute value here because this could be positive or negative depending on whether or not the cat is um, slowing down or speeding up. But we want the difference to always be um, positive. We just want to know how far is it between the upper estimate and the overestimate. So this is a very useful formula because it tells us how small a delta t we need to choose um, in order to um, get a particular difference between the left-hand sums and the right-hand sums. So um, uh, I'll next show you how to use this formula to solve a problem. All right, so let's say that we have, uh, let's see, this is a little fast for a cat. Maybe this is a car. And we want to know how far the car goes from uh, time 2 to time 8. 2 seconds to 8 seconds. And uh, when it's at 2 seconds, it's traveling at 10 meters per second, but by the time we get here, it's sped up to 25 meters per second. And so in order to figure out how far the car actually goes, we would need to make lots of little left-hand sums and right-hand sums. And the question is, how many would we need, and how small a delta t would we need, in order to have the difference between the left-hand and right-hand sums be only half a meter? So um, we can use this formula from before. The difference is this expression, delta t, um, times the difference in velocities. So let's, let's do that. So the difference is delta t, vf minus vi. And by difference here, I mean difference between the left-hand sums and right-hand sums. And well, we want that to be a half a meter. Delta t, we don't know. And then here I've got final minus initial. That's 25 meters per second minus 10 meters per second. 25 minus 10 is 15. So I've got 0 0.5 meters equals delta t times 15 meters per second. So we want to solve for delta t. So I'll divide both sides by 15. 0 0.5 meters, 15 meters per second equals delta t. So let's see what that is. 0 0.5 divided by 15 equals 0 0.33 is delta t. So this tells us how small a delta t we would need to choose if we wanted the difference between the left-hand sums and right-hand sums to be a half meter, this delta t would um, be what we'll need to choose so that we could figure out, uh, our, our final answer would be accurate to within half a meter. So um, this formula, um, I hope the derivation is fairly straightforward uh, from this geometric view, and it's not too difficult to apply it, and it can give all sorts of useful information.